So I've been playing around with Noted, and I think it's one of those add-ons that makes shader work in Blender feel a little less tedious. It doesn't try to take over your workflow or replace Blender's node system, it just gives you a solid set of tools that help with common shader tasks. If you're used to manually setting up things like heat effects, scratches, proximity masks, or edge wear, this thing basically just speeds up the process. No extra menus or confusing interfaces, just a bunch of node groups you can drop into your shader tree and tweak like any other node. Installing it is as simple as dropping the zip file into the Blender add-on menu. Once it's enabled, you'll find its nodes in the shader editor, either in the Shift A menu or somewhere in the sidebar, depending on how you have things set up. There's no weird configuration or extra UI to deal with, which is always nice. One of the nodes I ended up using a lot was Heat It, which makes it really easy to add a heat glow effect for materials. It sits between the principal BSDF and whatever is controlling the base color. And you can tweak things like intensity, color tint, and even add a bit of distortion to make it look more natural. There's also an ambient occlusion setting, so the glow reacts to nearby objects, which is a nice touch. Another one that ended up being more useful than I expected was Color Shift It. This one randomly shifts the color of duplicated objects instead of manually adjusting the textures for each object. You just drop this node in, tweak the hue and saturation ranges, and it handles everything procedurally. There's a random seed slider, so if you don't like how it looks, you just roll the dice until you get something that works. Proximity Mask It is another interesting one. It lets you create a mask based on how close one object is to another, which opens up a lot of possibilities for dynamic effects. I tested it out by making a surface heat up as an object got closer. It's the kind of thing you could use for burn marks, dirt accumulation, wetness effects, or even magic effects in a stylized project. You do have to link it to an empty to control the proximity, but once that's set up, it's pretty easy to use. Edgeware it does exactly what you'd expect. It creates a mask for edgeware. If you've ever manually painted edgeware in Blender, you know it can be a pain, so having a procedural way to do it is really useful. The node lets you adjust how strong the effect is and even add some more noise to break up the edges. There's an EV optimized mode, which is nice because edgeware effects in EV usually require some extra work. It works well on things like metal, painted surfaces, or anything that should look a little worn down. Destruct it one creates procedural destruction effects, like holes and cracks, based on the proximity of an empty. It comes with a few different noise types, so you can get anything from organic rips to sci-fi style energy damage. Moving on to Warp It, which is basically a procedural texture distortion tool, it lets you warp, bend, or stretch textures without needing extra displacement maps or external software. And it worked really well when combined with Blur It which softens textures without needing to manually adjust the roughness or mix shaders. Together, these two nodes can be used to create some pretty interesting stylized effects. Turning to animation, Animate is a simple animation tool that instead of manually keyframing values, this node lets you animate things like slider values with built-in options for linear movement, oscillation, and even random glitches. It's great for having flickering lights, pulsing textures, or even simple motion effects like procedural waves. There's also a glitch mode that removes in-between frames, which looks pretty cool for UI effects or sci-fi animations. Most of the nodes are really intuitive and don't require a ton of setup, which I appreciate. Some, like Proximity Mask it, do require linking it to an empty, but that's not a huge deal once you understand how it works. The fact that everything stays procedural means you can adjust things on the fly without having to bake anything, which makes iteration a lot faster. I also like that there's an effort to keep things optimized for EV, since not all procedural shaders work well in real-time rendering. If there's anything that could be improved, I think an in-editor preview would be helpful for quickly seeing how a node affects a shader without having to plug it into a full material setup. Some nodes, like Edgeware, depend on ambient occlusion, which means they might not work as expected in EV unless you tweak the AO settings. It's not a major issue, but something to keep in mind. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.